Well, hi friends. Today, let's lean into greater understanding from 1 Peter chapter 5. Now, have you ever been like so worked up, so in a tizzy that all logic just kind of went out the window as you experience a rush of anxiety from the situation at hand? I, I know for me in moments like that, I get such tunnel vision that nothing else seems to have much importance for me. And that's exactly what happened to me several weeks ago when I couldn't find my keys. Now I had searched high and low. I ransacked my car, I looked through every coat pocket, and I even checked the refrigerator to see if I stuck them in there for some reason. Literally, it was like no stone was unturned in our house. And the last place I hadn't checked yet was the garbage. The outside garbage can that now had dirty cat litter on top of it. It was the last place I remembered having my keys, having taken out the trash while I was leaving to run an errand. As I was gearing up my mind and trying to find my hazmat suit, I felt like I needed to just slow down my pace for just a second and simply ask the Holy Spirit where my keys were. When I finally did just that, I felt like I saw them sitting in our front entry table's junk drawer. Now, I'd never put my keys in there, and I, I just reluctantly marched over and I yanked that drawer open, and lo and behold, there were my keys. I could now leave for a Wednesday night service at church. Now you can blame that on pregnancy brain or simply my regular non-pregnant absent-mindedness, but I've never put my keys in that drawer before. And when I realized the Holy Spirit cared enough about my day, my responsibilities at church, and even my mental health enough to take time to show me where I'd set those suckers, I was filled with worship. I truly felt a greater understanding of what we read in 1 Peter 5, 7 when it says to cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I genuinely experienced the care of God for something so small, so menial that it shouldn't be on God's radar as something to help me with. And yet he loved me and helped my mess of a self that blurry Wednesday afternoon. And when I read today's passage, it was this moment that came to my mind for me when I read verse 7. And as I share this, I'm sure situations and circumstances just like that are popping into your mind too. But as I studied this specific portion of scripture in greater detail, I realized that I'd only just begun to scratch the surface of understanding what we're presented here. You see, we've got to read verse 7 in light of the surrounding verses. So listen to 1 Peter 5, 5b through 7. It says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Now, what relationship is there between these two ideas? Aren't they massively separate. I mean like humility and pride in one bucket and anxiety and care in another. Let's see. You see there's kind of a poor translation going on here. We read the word cast in most translations when the Greek actually uses the participle casting. Casting all your anxiety upon him. This actually explains how believers can humble themselves under God's strong hand. Seeing the relationship between the main verb here, which is humble yourselves of verse 6, and the participle, casting all your anxiety upon him, is important because it shows that giving in to worry is an example of pride. These two verses in light of each other, help us to see that believers humble themselves by casting their worries on God. And at the same time, if believers continue to worry, then they're caving in to pride. Now you're probably saying, Abby, how can anxiety and worry be criticized as pride? I can see that it may be a lack of faith, but does it really make sense to identify worry as pride? Well, you see, Worry is a form of pride because when believers are filled with anxiety, they are convinced that they must solve all their problems in their own strength. The only God that they trust in is themselves. When we throw our worries upon God, we're expressing our trust in his mighty hand, acknowledging that he is Lord and sovereign over all of life. 
when we humble ourselves before him, com coming under his leadership, his ways, his wisdom, his care, we feel the burden of anxiety lifted. You see, Peter wrote this to a church afflicted by great suffering and distress and, and distress. And of course, he realized that they're facing anxiety. And he knew that affliction either drives us into the arms of God or severs us from him. Which is why he was so quick to remind us that God is not indifferent, nor is he cruel. He has compassion on his children, and he will sustain them in every distress, big or small. Now, I don't have time to read it all, but Peter's wisdom here is reminiscent of the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And I encourage you to go take a read. But Jesus concludes those thoughts by saying, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. So I implore each of us to allow the Holy Spirit to show us where in our pride we have believed we're left to our own devices to figure it out. Where are we not trusting God? What ways in his word am I not submitted to out of pride, trying to do it better on my own terms? As he shows us, let's be quick to repent and to return our trust back to him, the one who so deeply cares about us. When I did this exact exercise today, I felt so much anxiety and stress just feel released from my system because I re realized I was carrying burdens of worry that he never intended for me to carry. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.